An issue that I'm having a lot lately is that I'm getting lots of keepers, especially new keepers, which is okay, that aren't too sure on how to accurately and reliably measure temperatures, and especially the difference between basking surface temperature and actual air temperature. People are conflating the two and it's becoming a problem. And that's okay. It's an easy mistake to make. Even keepers that have been keeping for decades are still relatively confused about the difference between basking surface temperature and air temperature. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go over both and I'm going to show you how I take temperatures and how I measure and how to do this reliably and accurately at home. There are two temperature readings you need to record. Air temperature and basking surface temperature. The basking surface temperature is basically the surface temperature of objects within your vivarium. And quite simply, this is measured with a temperature gun or an infrared laser thermometer or an infrared temp gun, whatever you want to call it. This is simply point and shoot. So I got this from the middle aisle of Lidl's for £15. So it isn't exactly expensive. This is very simply point and shoot. Now this shoots a laser infrared that bounces back a surface temperature reading of the object you point the gun at. So the, but the surface temperature of this log is 26 degrees 0.7 basically. Now this device does not measure the air temperature. Now that is something that confuses many keepers but you're not actually accurately recording your ambient air temperatures in the enclosure by using an infrared temp gun. I see many videos get this wrong by saying that an infrared temp gun is the only measuring equipment that you need um, when it's actually not the case. This solely measures the surface temperature of objects. So that's particularly important when we're measuring things like surface temperature in things like a rack. I don't particularly use racks, but if you're using something like a heat mat for hatchlings and things like that, you're actually looking for the basque surface temperature to create that basking site. Things like Exoterra thermometers, if you get them in contact with the floor, that can work. Again, with surface temperature, it's much easier to use a temp gun for that. Now, when we're actually measuring air temperature, that is where we use different equipment. Now, the more accurate piece of equipment is something that you obviously see in the hobby constantly. And if you're keeping reptiles, you obviously already know about these or you already own these. The problem is these are commonplace and this is a digital thermometer. This one's made by Exoterra, everyone buys Exoterra, and they get recommended over and over and over again in YouTube videos, which is fine, but then when people use these in YouTube videos, they use them incorrectly and actually give inaccurate readings when people look at displays. So the problem with these probes, where well, it's not a problem, it's how this works. Basically, this gets a reading based on the temperature the end probe reaches at. Now this probe, without going into too much detail, is a black body projector by being black in nature. That means it's going to absorb radiation. And by radiation, I basically mean things that emit light. So if I were to place this probe under the light, you're actually going to get an elevated reading based upon the light itself warming the end of the probe because it's a black object. And even if it's only a metal shiny object, you're still going to get an elevated basking reading from this probe end because it's in the light. And if you have this probe actually in contact with surfaces in the enclosure, then you're actually getting something basically touching the probe and again, influencing that reading. If you truly want to read the air temperature in the enclosure, the ambient air temperature, what you need to do is place the probe in an area that's shaded, not within light and not touching objects. So let's go for an example. Right, currently this is at 27 degrees. If I place this in such a way that the probe is up facing the radiation in contact with nothing else but itself, Okay, that probe is sticking up in the air. 
you can see that that probe is not in contact with other objects. It's up in the air under radiation. So what we'll do is we'll leave it five minutes. We'll let that actually equalize and get a reading under the radiation, which will be elevated above what I'm going to do next. So I'll come back in five minutes and you'll see what that temperature reading will be. So it's been five minutes. So now let's take out this and let's see what the reading is. So the reading is actually 28 degrees Celsius exactly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place this probe in an area of shade, keep the probe elevated in an upright position so it's surrounded by air and not touching objects, but in the shade, and we'll see what this reading is going to be. So it's been five minutes and the temperature is dropping. Actually, I, it's still dropping, but I'm gonna call it here. I think this probe's temperature would actually drop further. But for the sake of the point of the video, I think you're gonna get the idea. So it was in this bit of cork, out of radiation, probe pointing up, not touching anything. Let's pull this out. So the reading, before I touched the probe with my finger, was exactly 26 degrees. So actually the true air temperature in here is two degrees lower than it is when, in, when under radiation. So that's the difference between basking surface temperature and air temperature. It's not enough to just go in with a temp gun and say, oh, this is the temperature of the enclosure. That isn't the correct way to do it. So you want to measure your air temperature and your temp gun reading of the surface temperature. And the air temperature reading in that enclosure is going to be the same throughout the enclosure. It's not going to be a cooler air temperature at the cool end versus a air temperature at the hot end. The air temperature is not going to change drastically within four feet of space. Now, an example of this would be if you went outside right now in the sun, if you were in the sun, you would feel really hot. But if you went in the shade, it would feel far cooler. And the only difference there is direct radiation upon you. The air temperature in both of those scenarios is the same. The air isn't cooler in the shade. The air is the same temperature. The only difference in that scenario is radiation. And that's exactly the scenario that happens there with the temperature probe. Make sure when you're measuring your air temperature that your probe isn't under radiation or what you're actually getting is an elevated reading than what the actual true air temperature is. Thank you very much to all the Patreon supporters. This is funding a lot of the projects that we're trying to do right now. Got a very special announcement for viewers of the channel that's coming out soon. Patrons already are aware of it, but something cool is coming up soon. But for now, I hope this made sense and I hope it was useful and I'll see you in another video.